Section 35 of The Bible, Book by Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Bible, Book by Book by Josiah Blake Tidwell. Section 35, Chapter 27. John. The Author. From the evidence found in the Gospel, we may learn several things about the author. 1. That he was a Jew. This is seen in his evident knowledge of Jewish opinions concerning such subjects as the Messiah, and his knowledge of their customs such as the purification. 2. He was an eyewitness to most of what he relates. This is seen in his exact knowledge of time, as to the hour or time of day a thing occurred, in his knowledge of the number of persons or things present, as the division of his garments into four parts, in the vividness of the narrative which he could hardly have had without first having seen it all. 3. He was an apostle. This is seen in his knowledge of the thoughts of the disciples, chapter 2, verse 11 and 17, in his knowledge of the private words of the disciples to Jesus and among themselves, chapter 4, verse 31 and 33, etc., in his knowledge of the private resorts of the disciples, chapter 11, verse 54, etc., and in his knowledge of the Lord's motives, etc., chapter 2, verse 24 through 25, etc., and in his knowledge of Christ's feelings, chapter 11, verse 33. 4. He was the son of Zebedee, Mark chapter 1, verse 19 through 20, and was probably one of John's two disciples whom he turned to Jesus, chapter 1, verse 40. 5. He is one of the three most prominent of the apostles being several times especially honored, Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 3, etc., and is prominent in the work of the church after Christ's ascension, as well as in all their work before his death. 6. He also wrote three epistles and revelation. He outlived all the other apostles and is supposed to have died on the Isle of Patmos as an exile about 100 A.D. The Times and Circumstances of the Writings These are so different from those which influence the other evangelists that one can hardly escape the feeling that John's Gospel is colored accordingly. The Gospel had been preached in all the Roman Empire, and Christianity was no longer considered a Jewish sect attached to the synagogue. Jerusalem had been overthrown, and the temple destroyed. Christians had been sorely persecuted, but had achieved great triumphs in many lands. All the rest of the New Testament, except Revelation, had been written. Some had arisen who disputed the deity of Jesus, and while the gospel is not a mere polemic against that false teaching, it does, by establishing the true teaching, thoroughly undermine the false. He perhaps wrote to Christians of all nationalities, whose history had by this time been enriched by the blood of martyrs for the faith. Instead of the Messiah in whom Jews would find a Savior, or the mighty worker in whom the Roman would find him, or the ideal man in whom the Greeks would find him, John wrote concerning the eternal, incarnate Word in whose spiritual kingdom each, having lost his narrowness and racial prejudice, could be forever united. The style and the plan. This gospel differs from the others in language and plan. It is both profound and simple, and has several elements of style as follows. 1. Simplicity. The sentences are short and connected by coordinate conjunctions. There are but few direct quotations, and but few dependent sentences, 
and most of them show the sequence of things either as a cause or a purpose. 2. Sameness This arises from the method of treating each step in the narrative as if isolated and separate from all the rest rather than merging it into the complete whole. 3. Repetition Whether in the narrative proper or in the quoted words of the Lord is very frequent. The following examples will illustrate this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. I am the Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd giveth his life. Jesus then, when he saw her weeping, and the Jews that were weeping with her, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Let the student gather a list of all such repetitions. 4. Parallelism, or statements expressing the same or similar truths, such as the following, are common. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. This parallelism, which at the same time becomes repetition, is seen in the way a subject or conclusion is stated, and after elaboration, restated in a new and enlarged view, thus teaching the truth in a gradually unfolding beauty and force. An illustration is found in the statement, I will raise him up in the last day, chapter 6, verse 39, 40, 44. 5. Contrasts. The plan is more simple and more easily seen all along than is that of any other of the evangelists. On the one hand, he shows how love and faith are developed in the believer until, in the end, Thomas, who was the most doubtful of all, could exclaim, My Lord and my God. On the other hand, he shows the unbeliever advanced from mere indifference to a positive hatred that culminated in the crucifixion. This purpose is carried out by a process of contrasting and separating things that are opposites, such as a. Light and darkness, b. Truth and falsehood, c. Good and evil, d. Life and death, e. God and Satan. In all of these he is convincing his reader that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Characteristics and Purpose 1. Is a Gospel of the Feasts Indeed, if subtract from it those miracles and teachings and other works performed in connection with the feasts, we should have only a few fragments left. The value of the book would be destroyed and the most beautiful and the profoundest teachings of the Gospel lost. The student will do well from the following list of feasts to endeavor to group around each all that John records as occurring in connection with it. 1. The Feast of the Passover, chapter 2, verse 13 and 23, first Passover, A.D. 27. 2. A Feast of the Jews, chapter 5, verse 1, probably Purim. 3. Passover. A Feast of the Jews, chapter 6, verse 4, second Passover, A.D. 28. 4. Feast of the Tabernacles, chapter 7, verse 2. 5. Feast of the Dedication, chapter 10, verse 22. 6. Passover, chapter 11, verses 55 to 56, chapter 12, verse 1, 12, 20, chapter 13, verse 29. Chapter 18, verse 28. Third Passover, A.D. 29. 2. It is a Gospel of Testimony. 
John writes to prove that Jesus is the Christ. He assumes the attitude of a lawyer before a jury and introduces testimony until he feels certain of his case and then closes the testimony with the assurance that much more could be offered if it seemed necessary. There are seven lines of testimony. One, the testimony of John the Baptist. Two, the testimony of certain other individuals. Three, the testimony of Jesus' works. Four, the testimony of Jesus himself. See the I Ams. Five, the testimony of the scripture. 6. The testimony of the Father. 7. The testimony of the Holy Spirit. 3. It is a gospel of belief. The purpose being to produce belief, there are given numerous examples of belief, showing the growth of faith, the secret of faith, such as hearing or receiving the word, the results of faith, such as eternal life, freedom, peace, power, etc. Or, it is a spiritual gospel. It represents the deeper mediations of John, which are shaped so as to establish a great doctrine, which, instead of history, became his great impulse. To John, history is doctrine and he reviews it in the light of its spiritual interpretation. It furnished a great bulwark against the Gnostic teachers who had come to deny the deity of Jesus. He also emphasized and elaborated the humanity of Jesus. His whole purpose is not so much the historic record of the facts as the development of their inmost meaning. 5. It is a gospel of symbolism. John was a mystic and delighted in mystic symbols. The whole book speaks in the language of symbols. The mystic numbers 3 and 7 prevail throughout the book not only in the things and sayings recorded, but in the arrangement of topics. Each of the eight miracles is used for a sign or symbol, as the feeding of the 5,000 in which Jesus appears as the bread or support of life the great allegories of the Good Shepherd, the Sheepfold and the Vine, the names used to designate Jesus as the Word, Light, the Way, the Truth, the Life, etc., all show how the whole Gospel is penetrated with a spirit of symbolic representation. 6. It is a Gospel of the Incarnation. Matthew explains his messianic function. Mark his active works, and Luke his character as Savior. John magnifies his person and everywhere makes us see the Word made flesh. God is at no great distance from us. He has become flesh. The Word has come as the incarnate man. Jesus, the incarnate man, is God, and as such fills the whole book. But he nevertheless hungers and thirsts and knows human experience. God has come down to man to enable him to rise up to God. Subject, Jesus the Christ, God's Son. Analysis Introduction or Prologue, Chapter 1, Verses 1 through 18. 1. The Divine Nature of the Word, Verses 1 through 5. 2. The Manifestation of the Word as the World's Savior, Verses 6 through 18. Roman numeral 1. The Testimony of His Great Public Ministry, Chapter 1, Verses 19 through Chapter 12, The End. 1. He is Revealed. Chapter 1, verse 19, through chapter 2, verse 12. 2. He is recognized. Chapter 2, verse 13, through chapter 3, the end. 3. He is antagonized. Chapters 5 through 11. 4. He is honored. Chapter 12. Roman numeral 2. The testimony of his private ministry with his disciples. Chapters 13 through 17. 
1. He teaches and comforts his disciples. Chapters 13 through 16. 2. He prays for his disciples. Chapter 17. Roman numeral 3. The Testimony of His Passion. Chapters 18 and 19. 1. His Betrayal. Chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. 2. The Jewish or Ecclesiastical Trial. Chapter 18, verses 12 through 27. 3. The Roman or Civil Trial. Chapter 18, verse 28 through chapter 19, verse 16. 4. His Death and Burial. Chapter 19, verse 17 to the end. Roman numeral 4. The Testimony of His Resurrection and Manifestation Chapters 20 and 21 1. His Resurrection and Manifestation to His Disciples Chapter 20 2. Further Manifestations and Instructions to His Disciples Chapter 21 For Study and Discussion 1. The Events and Discourses Connected with Each Feast Mentioned Above 2. The seven lines of testimony mentioned above list examples of each. 3. The following miracles as signs, pointing out what they symbolize about Jesus. a. The Cana miracle, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. b. The nobleman's son, chapter 4, verses 48 through 54. c. The impotent man, Chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. D. Feeding 5,000. Chapter 6, verses 3 through 14. E. Walking on the sea. Chapter 6, verses 16 through 20. F. Healing the blind man. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 16. Read all the chapter. G. Raising Lazarus, Chapter 11 H. The Draft of Fishes, Chapter 21, Verses 1-11 through 11. 4. The Following Discourses A. The Conversation with Nicodemus, Chapter 3 B. The Conversation with the Woman at the Well, Chapter 4 C. The Discourse on the Shepherd and the Sheep, Chapter 10 D. The Discussions of Chapter 13 E. The Discourse on the Vine Chapter 15 F. The Lord's Prayer Chapter 17 5. From the following passages, find the cause or explanation of unbelief. Chapter 1, verse 45 Chapter 3, verse 11, 19, and 20 Chapter 5, verses 16, 40, 42, and 44. Chapter 6, verse 42 and 52. Chapter 7, verses 41, 42, and 48. Chapter 8, verses 13, 14, and 45. Chapter 12, verse 26 and 44. Chapter 20, verse 9. 6. From the following, Study the results of unbelief. Chapter 3, verses 18, 20, and 36. Chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Chapter 6, verse 35, 53, 58. Chapter 8, verse 19, 34, and 55. Chapter 14, verses 1 and 28. Chapter 15, verse 5. Chapter 16, verses 6 and 9. 7. Make a list of all the night scenes of the book and study them. 8. Study each instance of someone worshipping Jesus. 9. Name each chapter of the book so as to indicate some important event in it, as the Vine chapter or Good Shepherd chapter. 10. Find where and how many times each of the following words and phrases occurs, and study them as time will admit. 1. Eternal life, 17 times, only 18 in all the other Gospels. 2. 
believe. 3. Believe on. 4. Scent. 5. Life. 6. Sign or signs. In the revised version. 7. Work or works. 8. John the Baptist. 9. Verily, always double and used by Jesus. 10. Receive, received, etc. 11. Witness or testify, testimony, etc. 12. Truth. 13. Manifest, manifested. 14. I am spoken by Jesus. End of section 35. Read by Bill Mosley, Llano County, Texas, USA. February 2nd, 2023.